Hey guys, I hope all is well. So let's talk about Sylvanas Windrunner. Ever since her debut in Warcraft 3, she's been one of Blizzard's most popular characters and has become a part of many of Blizzard's future games and promotions. And when I saw that her gear was up on the Diablo 4 shop, I knew I just had to grab it and make a character cosplay. And boy, will I say this has definitely been the strongest character I've ever made. I'm very excited to show you a fairly decent build capable of doing tier 100 nightmare dungeons, tier 100 pit, tier 7 hordes and with 500 million damage per second to staggered bosses capable of absolutely disintegrating the health bars of every single tormented boss especially considering the fact that for the first time i took down uber lilith in my very first attempt that doodoo bird pigeon and as will be showcased in the video my gear is definitely not optimized there's certainly more room for upgrades and i don't even have any crazy triple or even double greater affixed gear and none of my gear is fully masterworked and I pretty much only use level 15 glyphs. With more time and optimization into the build, I'm sure it can reach beyond tier 100 in the pit and even do tier 8 hordes. I will say I am using one uber unique, but that's the one that you can pretty much get for free by crafting it with materials you get just by getting the seasonal rewards along with 50 mil gold. And just because it excited me so much, I will give a spoiler that I did get two of the best mythical uniques that dropped from bosses during the making of this build showcase. And one of them is something that I never ever thought I'd ever have dropped for me in my entire lifetime. But before I jump into the video, please like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you think of the build because any feedback is always appreciated. Regarding the playstyle of the build, I wanted this build to embody the persona of Sylvanas, and there's three ways of going about doing that. I could either do pure shadow imbuement because Sylvanas fires dark arrows in World of Warcraft. I could do pure cold imbuement because Sylvanas fires frost arrows in Warcraft 3 and subsequently in Dota. Or I could go a hybrid of both and although I do think it's very fitting for her persona that I go hybrid imbuements, I just didn't see it working out very well in terms of a high level Diablo 4 character because I was going to end up sacrificing something on my ability bar and it would probably be between getting rid of either smoke grenade or caltrops. But both of those skills have strong contributions in my high damage output, not to mention I'd be missing out on stacking more imbuement casts on multiple gear pieces. So in the end, I decided not to go hybrid for the sake of consistency consistency and damage and decided to go with ice imbuement because I think it ends up working out better for bossing due to building the stagger bar quicker than shadow imbuement. Then I chose Heartseeker because of puncture because I'm more used to Sylvanas from Warcraft 3 and Dota and she doesn't use any daggers in those games. And lastly I chose Barrage as my core because I think it clears mobs more efficiently than rapid fire and then I just invest into crit and there's the build concept. I have cold clip to make my Heartseeker always cold imbued and I stack more imbuement casts on my gear and I'm pretty much always firing ice arrows that crit for stupid amounts of damage. And regarding the 500 mil DPS on staggered bosses, I pretty much just stacked a boatload of multiplicative damage on enemies with various crowd control effects on them through my aspects, tree and paragon, and then damage per dark shroud through tempering is huge for damage as well. And then like I said, I build into crit and crit chance for even more damage, then all of a sudden I start hitting for up to like 70 mil per arrow coupled with combo point bonuses which give me nine arrows complemented by lots of increased attack speed all of which gets me to roughly 500 mil damage per second other than that the build does have two problems which pretty much fit the character pretty well which is a lower than optimal hp pool at just under 30k and no way to become unstoppable or break myself free from getting feared stunned or frozen which is honestly a big problem but i was able to manage by just being careful with my positioning and aware of my surroundings, as one should be if they don't have the best defenses. But honestly, my best defense is pretty much my offense coupled with mobility and caution. Alrighty, so let's move on to gear. For my helm, I'm running the new Season 5 Unique Crown of Lucian because not only does it give me life, it gives me a huge boost in DPS, even though it comes with a huge downside, which increases the energy cost of my barrage by stupid amounts. But luckily, I have 
have for my first ring the uber unique ring of starless skies which like i said earlier i pretty much crafted for free just by playing the game which not only gives me amazing offensive affixes but gives me a stupid amount of multiplicative damage and resource cost reduction it's because of this ring that i'm even able to properly run crown of lucian otherwise i don't think the crown would work well in this build and i'd probably just stick to a cowl of the nameless which is actually what i did until i was able to craft the ring and secondly to help further with that energy problem i'm also running sky hunter for my two-handed weapon also because we're invested into crit and the precision key passive the bow just gives a huge boost to damage although for the longest time i was actually running a wind force in the meantime before getting my hands on a sky hunter honestly this isn't even a crazy good version of the sky hunter it's just like decent at best there are definitely some next level crazy good greater affixed sky hunters out there that would be a massive upgrade to this build for my chest i've got life armor dark shroud chance to freeze and plus percent max life while dark shroud is active and thanks to my umbrus aspect and investment into crit my dark shroud pretty much is always active for my gloves i've got cold clip aspect to enable permanent cold imbuement on my heart seeker not to mention a huge boost in multiplicative damage and it's got life armor barrage smoke grenade cooldown reduction for bosses and damage per dark shroud for my legs i'm running tacits of the dawning sky which i'm pretty sure is off meta since the majority of people are running second wind on a regular pair of pants and tyrell's might on their chest but I didn't have Tyrell's Might while making this build, so I decided to do this instead. And honestly, the Tacits work out pretty well for me because it fills out my stats and resistances, gives me extra max res, which is always nice, and extra adaptive max res, which is pretty sweet from time to time. For my boots, I'm running Penitent Greaves for the damage boost, and plus, it kind of complements the Sylvanas Persona, even though, to my knowledge, she doesn't leave a trail of frost. For my amulets, I'm running Branching Volleys for clear speed with a bunch of damage affixes and more casts of cold imbuement and damage per dark shroud for my second ring i'm running high velocity for clear speed and quality of life and it's got life damage crit more casts of cold imbuement and damage per dark shroud next up for my main hand i'm running condemnation so that i can get more arrows for my barrage not to mention the huge boost in damage from the dagger itself and for my off hand i'm running retribution for the huge boost in damage and it's got life damage crit damage chance for barrage to cast twice and damage per dark shot lastly for my jewels i got rubies for max life skulls to hit armor cap a diamond to hit res cap and emeralds for crit damage although i ended up not needing the skulls because i'm over capped on armor all right so for my skill tree like i said i go heart seeker into fundamental because of the extra crit damage then of course you know our build is centered around barrage and i go improved to make enemies vulnerable and then i also put three points into sturdy and then a couple into siphoning strikes down here i go caltrops into methodical for the chill then of course you got to get unstable elixirs and trick attacks i get a point into dash into enhanced dash for the crit chance i get weapon mastery which is pretty staple i max out dark shroud into subverting dark shroud for the extra boost in life regen and then i get smoke grenade into countering smoke grenade for elites and bosses and then of course you got to get exploit and then malice I go cold imbuement as this build is centered around and then into mixed cold imbuement for that huge boost in damage and then of course frigid finesse for an even greater boost in damage 60% times against frozen enemies which are basically staggered bosses this is a massive amount of multiplicative damage and then of course you go innervation for energy regen and then second wind is pretty much a staple since we are using a lot of energy due to crown of lucian and this pretty much gives us an extra 13k life which brings us at about 43k which which is pretty nice you know it's not bad and then of course lastly we have precision which is the bulk and bread and butter of all of our crit damage for my paragon tree i'm pretty much copying musos and i'll put a link for his tree in the description i only vary just based off of one point so pretty much on your starting board you get combat and then on your next board i have eldritch bounty with canny for the non-fizz damage because we are running cold imbuement pretty much all the time and then on the next board is no witnesses i don't actually spec into this because i don't use an ultimate but i do take advantage of the fluidity which boosts the max life nodes around here and then over here i come up and get exploit weakness i don't need any of this other stuff i just get the legendary node pretty much and then i pick up damage reduction from vulnerable enemies and then the extra max life here and then on the next board i have tricks of the trade which is really nice because whenever we cast our dash or our caltrops we get a huge boost in damage to our barrage and then over here i socket control and then i split off here and get the cunning stratagem plus the extra resistances to cap our res 
And then up here, I come into Deadly Ambush for that extra crit damage every time we cast our Caltrops. And then over here, I Socket Ambush. Wow, I didn't even realize that I wasn't getting the bonus from this. That's crazy. Okay, yeah. I guess I'll just unspec out of this and then just put this here for consistency's sake. There you go. There's the extra 10% multiplicative damage. Wow, that's pretty crazy. So I did I did lose a tiny bit of life there, but it's okay. In the long run, it's not an issue. And then lastly, for my last board, I have Cheap Shot for that extra huge boost to staggered bosses. And then I just come here to pick up damage reduction from elites. All right, so this pretty much went over my head during the recording of the boss kill. And it didn't even register in my head that I got a purple text drop from the boss and I only realized what I actually got once I picked it up and I immediately turned the recorder back on because I was most certainly shooketh and boy oh boy did I never expect in my life for a boss to ever poop out a harlequin's crest I was so incredibly excited to get this as a drop from a boss because it's just such a classic and incredibly rare and sought after a helm that can fit into any and all builds I know they did increase the drop rate for all mythical uniques but getting this specific item just makes me feel like I beat the game forever. And then to top it off, while I went to go back to do another Beast and Ice kill because I thought, you know, I could get a better kill for the showcase of the video, I ended up dropping a whole Tyrell's might. I was just flabbergasted that I got two back-to-back -back amazing mythical uniques that can be incorporated into like every build in the game, and it was just purely amazing by all standards. Alrighty, so there you have it. Here's my character. I did manage to find a better Sky Hunter, but along with my Harlequins and my Tyrell's Might, I opted not to use them because honestly, I didn't need them to do what this character was able to accomplish. But other than that, here is the Uber Lilith kill, which compared to my other builds, this build made the boss fight look so damn easy. I couldn't believe my eyeballs. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.